Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Claire and today we are going to talk about a fantasy series that I have not shut up about since I started reading it. And if you've watched my channel for the last like three months, any of my vlogs, I feel like you cannot escape the fact that I am in love with Joe Amber Crombie's The First Law Trilogy. The first book being The Blade itself. And I read my physical copy of that book that a friend sent to me. And I did a review about that, so check that out down below. And after I posted that review, I was told by so many people, a shocking number of people, that I have to listen to the audiobooks for the second and third book. And I had Audible, so I was like, okay. And I finished the second book. I get them all confused in my head before they were hanged, I wanna say. I finished that book about two months ago maybe like in late oh my gosh maybe mid oh my gosh maybe early October oh yikes and I didn't film a review for it because all I had to say was that it was amazing it was one of the best entertainment experiences of my life almost up there with Avatar The Last Airbender like I got the audiobook and I was immediately blown away by it. I've gone into audiobooks recently and I haven't really had a bad audiobook experience. I definitely know that people have where they like really don't like the narrator, where it turns them off from the book. I haven't had that experience. All the audiobooks I've listened to thus far have been great, but this one was just on another level. The actor, whose name I will insert here, unbelievably talented, just uh, unbelievable. So. All I had to say for the second book, all that I could make a review about was just how much I loved every single second, every plot point, every character POV, every incident that they were in. I was just like, yeah, this rules. <laughs> really the only part I didn't like is the ending because I didn't want to stop. I was mad that I had to like, go into my Audible account and find the third one and wait for it to download. But I mean, I started that baby immediately. If I can throw some second book highlights out there, definitely Giselle getting his jaw smashed in and that little like <laughs> cute transformation that came with that. Prince Lavislaw dying, <laughs> spoilers. And honestly, everything that was going on with Colonel West, I was shocked by how much I loved his storyline and his character in the second book. I loved everything about him, <laughs> furious. And I love Pharaoh and Logan getting together. I started shipping them in the beginning and when it finally happened, I was like, yeah, I'm glad that these characters are happy. That makes me happy. And I just liked Logan a lot in general. He's probably my favorite character in the series. Kind of tied with Giselle. I love Giselle and kind of Colonel West. I like them all. And Glockta. Literally everything. This is why I couldn't do a review on this. I just liked everything. And basically, the same thing with the third book. I gasped out loud when Giselle was named King. I teared up a little bit when Logan and the Dogmen and all the Northmen were reunited. I was at the edge of my seat during the climax when Pharaoh was holding the, the seed and all the crazy stuff was happening and I was so into it until about the last three hours of that audiobook and then things got weird and went in a direction I wasn't expecting. And here's the thing. My main thesis of this entire review, if this was the third book in a four book series, I would be so on board with it. I would love it. I would think that it is absolutely brilliant because I would know that everything will actually get wrapped up in the next book, in the fourth book. But there is no fourth book. I can handle sad endings, depressing endings. What I don't like is feeling unsatisfied. And despite the fact 
that 99% of this journey to me was brilliant. And I'm still recommending this series to pretty much every single person I meet that I find out reads. I'm just like, yo, have you heard? The Blade itself. This has not stopped my love for this series and Joe Abercrombie and especially him as a writer. I've never connected to someone's writing as much as I have to his. That all being said, I do not like this as an ending. I felt cheated. To me, this would feel brilliant if there was a little bit more to come afterwards, if the real conclusion was going to come and what we're experiencing is the lowest point for all these characters. Cause it would be an interesting low point because I haven't looked up anyone else's opinions about this book. So I don't know if what I'm saying is on par with what the average reader feels or if this is blasphemy, but I get that this is one of those stories where everything comes back to where it started. And it's strange because it's like all these characters are just like where they were. I mean, Logan explicitly is right back to where we meet him in the blade itself, like running away from something, drowning in a river, blah, blah, blah like everyone's title is better. Glockta has more power. Giselle and Logan are kings. Baez is back to being basically a god, the man running the show. Pharaoh now can effectively seek her vengeance for her people because she has the power. It's like everyone's motivations has stayed the same. Like we thought in the second book that there is going to be all this character growth and people changing internally and kind of sort of, but not really. And they got better titles, but who they are on the inside is basically the same. And I'm, I don't know. These books are so smart. So it just, feels kind of frustrating to be cucked from this sort of emotional catharsis that I could just feel, I could just taste was around the corner. This like Logan coming to terms with being the bloody monk nine and Pharaoh realizing vengeance wasn't going to fix the hole in her heart and Giselle really, really aiming to be a good person and Glockta also being like, wait, why am I doing these things? Why am I torturing people? I don't want to be this anymore. Actually, just to drop a little pin in here, the only storyline that I really like in a very bittersweet way is RD and Glockta because I was shipping RD and Giselle this entire series. I really, really wanted it to work. And although I was sad it didn't work, I wasn't sad with where those two characters ended up. It was really sweet and everyone seemed happy. So I was like, okay, I'll take it. I hate the Giselle's wife, that queen, I hate that situation unless there is another book because then it's like, oh, okay, well, Giselle eventually is going to figure out like what's going on and that she's actually a lesbian and Glockto is pulling these strings to blah, 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 blah. But the fact that he just, we just end the book with him remaining ignorant about that, I, I just felt like between the majority of the third book and then all of the second and first book, we're watching these characters go through this really intense journey, meeting all these different people and changing. And it's just not satisfying to me to go through all of that only for no one to really change. Never really got that like, that that scene I also really wanted between the dog man and Logan. I wanted the dog man to just like really, really give it to Logan about like his behavior as the bloody nine to have like a real heart to heart, maybe even a fight. I don't know. I just wanted, I could not believe when the book ended. If you watch Avatar and Zuko, when he's reading about his grandfathers and he reaches the end of the scroll and he's like, that's it. That's exactly how I felt. And I feel like I'm repeating myself now where What's happening is not bad. It's just not a good ending to me. 
please leave your opinions down in the comments below. So like go hard on your theories and your opinions. I know Joe Ironbear Crombie came out with another book in this universe, but from my understanding, it takes place way in the future. So not quite what I was wanting. Let me tell you what I was wanting. Again, in my perfect world, there's a fourth book. And in this fourth book, all these characters are at this lowest point. They have more power than they've ever had before, but they're still emotionally unsatisfied with their lives. And they all know now that Baez is a dick. And despite the fact that they're all split up again, they all come back together and they take down Baez and they squish him like a bug. That's what I wanted. <laughs> that's what I still want. So that's where I'm at. I still love the book. I still love the series. I obviously have a major like writerly crush on Joe Abercrombie. He's just amazing. Please let me know about your opinions down in the comments below and which of Joe Abercrombie's books I should read next. I just put up my December and January TBR so it's going to be a hot minute before I can get back to a Joe Abercrombie book but I am going to and if it's one of his short stories, which short story should I read? Or should I read his other trilogy? Or should I just go ahead and read this new book that just came out recently? Let me know, let me know. Um, make sure to like this video, that really helps me out, and subscribe. I'm really itching to reach a thousand subscribers, so it'd mean the world to me if you would subscribe if you haven't already, or share this video you feel compelled to, it would really help me out. I love and appreciate you guys and I will see you next time. Bye.